be discussing about cystic pancreatic masses. CT and MRI increasingly detect pancreatic cyst, often as incidental findings. About 5 to 10 percent of all pancreatic neoplasms are of cystic variety. The diagnosis still remains problematic because there is significant overlap in the morphology of benign and premalignant lesions. These lesions can be classified as retention cyst, pseudocyst, or cystic neoplasms. The retention cyst and pseudocyst they form about 80 to 90 percent of total lesions, and the true neoplasms are just about 10 to 20 percent. The retention cysts are small developmental cysts which do not have any clinical significance. Pancreatic pseudocysts, these are the collection of pancreatic fluid and inflammatory exudates which are encapsulated by the fibrous tissue. Usually they are associated with history of acute pancreatitis. CT scan, it shows a well-defined homogeneous fluid filled cyst which does not have central non-liquefied components. These are actually the fluids which occur in acute pancreatic fluid collections and persist for more than four weeks time and they are termed as pseudocyst. On the contrary, wall of necrosis, these are the cysts which have presence of fluid along with that necrotic material and these occur in patients who had acute necrotizing pancreatitis and the acute necrotic collection when it persists for more than four weeks it is termed as wall of necrosis. MRI can help in differentiating between the pseudocyst and wall of necrosis because it shows the debris better than CT scan. Cystic neoplasms, the most common ones are the serous cystic neoplasm, the mucinous variety and the interductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, while the solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm are uncommon and sometimes any pancreatic tumor can undergo cystic degeneration. For cystic pancreatic masses, age and gender are very important because almost 99% of mucinous cystic neoplasm they are seen in middle-aged female while 75% of serous cystic neoplasms are seen in elderly female while solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasms they are exclusively seen in young female so age can help us in differentiating these tumors serous cystic neoplasms these are the benign tumors but large tumors can have tendency to increase in size and they can cause symptoms otherwise they are asymptomatic they can occur anywhere in the pancreas but the most common site is the head of pancreas and these are the lesions which can be seen in association with the von Happel lindu disease sometimes it is difficult to differentiate a serous microcystic adenoma from a side branch variety of interductal papillary mucinous neoplasms but the IPMN, they are always connected to the pancreatic duct, while serous cystic neoplasms, they do not show communication with pancreatic duct. CT scan, it shows a multicystic lesion, which can have a central scar and calcification. Usually, there is peripheral enhancement with enhancement of internal septi, and there can be atrophy of the pancreatic gland distal to the tumor. They are even very nicely seen on MRI also, which shows the multicystic appearance very well along with the central calcification. The mucinous cystic neoplasms, these can be the pre-malignant tumors and they may transform into the malignancy. They are exclusively seen in middle-aged female and usually these tumors are macrocystic with thick wall, septations and peripheral calcification can be present. 95% of these tumors occur in tail and body of pancreas. CT scan, it shows a hypodense unilocular or multilocular cyst. It can show peripheral calcification and there can be enhancement of the cyst wall and septi. But usually the tumors are more than 2 cm in size with less number of cysts compared to the serous variety. Interactive papillary mucinous neoplasms, these are the mucine producing tumors which can occur either in the main pancreatic duct or side branches of the pancreatic duct. And these are the low grade malignancies which are arising from the lining of the duct. They must have communication with the pancreatic duct and then sometimes they can be even multifocal. The main pancreatic duct type, it is associated with markedly dilated pancreatic duct and there can be a polypoidal lesion within the duct. The branch duct types, they can be multicystic with peripheral enhancement or sometimes these lesions can be combined type which had both the components, the, the main pancreatic duct and in the side branch also. The size can vary from few millimeters to pan ductal. Here is MRI which shows very nicely the small 
cystic lesion which is a branch duct variety of the interactal papillary mucinous neoplasm. The larger lesions, this is the central duct type with calcification soft tissue component and this is a clear cut malignant lesion with even metastatic deposits in liver. So this is how we can differentiate the different pancreatic cystic lesions with history, with the appearance and whether it is communicating with the pancreatic duct or not. How do we need to report? We have to mention all details about the cyst, the size, location, multiplicity, soft tissue component because enhancing soft tissue with dilated pancreatic duct are the worrisome features which can suggest malignant nature of the lesion. And this algorithm helps in follow up of the patient or further management because small lesions can be uh, safely followed up while larger lesions which are more than 3 cm size may require surgical excision. Thank you.